Okay. For all of our friends and community members in our North Penn School District uh, Facebook land, I believe we are broadcasting live. I'm going to do a quick check. I'm here with Dr. Todd Bauer, who is our new superintendent of the North Penn School District. I'm Bob Gilmer, coordinator of communications media. Dr. Bauer, say hello while I check to see if we're online. <laughs> Bob, I'm, I'm beating you to it. Uh, I just got onto Facebook to check, and it appears as though you and I are live. Uh, so I think we're good. But good morning, everybody. Uh, July 1st, first day of what I hope is many, many, many days as superintendent in North Penn School District. So excited to be here with you, Bob. Um, and something, uh, kind of a new mechanism to engage our community and, and just say hello and share some information. Excellent. So today is actually your day one. You're just about, uh, depending on, I know you start your day very early, usually four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. Uh, so I would say you're on the job now as superintendent for six hours or so now. Um, so it's day one. Uh, and I, I just want to start with recognizing that yesterday was Dr. Dietrich's last day as superintendent after uh, 12 years and 16 years with North Penn and over 40 years of of education experience and, and, and work in education. And we all know that that's not going to end as of yesterday, that he'll be continuing to, to contribute to education um, for some time to come. I, I was just curious, you know, we've had a lot of different events with Dr. Dietrich over the last couple of weeks um, and months, you know, as, as, as his time was you know, coming to an end at North Penn. Um, and through that process, uh, I'm just wondering, you know, any words of wisdom that that Kurt has given you uh, once you were appointed superintendent um, and, and any of uh, advice that he's given you just as a mentor and, and colleague and friend over, over the last several years that uh, you'll take with you as, as you begin your new role as superintendent? Yeah, that's a great question, Bob. And uh, it, certainly a strange dynamic to see his car pulling away yesterday afternoon. Um, really, really going to miss him as a mentor um, but more than anything, to be honest, as a friend, um, not that I can't keep in touch and that our friendship won't continue, uh, but I talk to him easily five times a day, you know, and I'm, I'm not just talking like, hey, where are you headed? All right, what's going on here? It's sit down and chat as, as friends, and I will really miss that. Um, so in terms of words of wisdom or lessons, uh, I don't even know where to begin. So the most obvious place is uh, the very beginning. When I came to North Penn in 2015, uh, almost hired as the high school principal, I had been through an interview process, three rounds, really rigorous process. My final interview was in front of 70 people I had to present. And all of that ended and I, they called me and offered me the job. And I said, you know what, before I accept that job, I'd like to sit down with you, Dr. Dietrich. And at the time, the HR director was Dr. McHugh. And I said, and I'd like to interview you a little bit. You've heard from me for the better part of four hours. I'd like to talk to you before I accept this job, because this has to be a, a happy marriage or relationship. So I think they were a little taken back by this young guy saying, no, I want to interview you now. And I go into the office uh, and sit down with them. And, and Dr. Dietrich, we'll call him Kurt, because he prides himself on being called Kurt, was so sincere and honest. Uh, I said to him, would you consider, I'm not going to indict anyone here, but would you consider this aspect of the organization to be high functioning? And he chuckled. He was like, <laughs> no, right? That's who he is. So honest, uh, so sincere, straightforward, doesn't hide behind anything. And he will meet you where you are. Uh, lessons, other lessons with the same kind of lineage to them include when there's a major issue at a school, or a teacher or a staff member who's really upset, or a principal who's going through something difficult, he starts his day in that school, right? He, that's the way he is. Oh, there was an issue at Culp yesterday. I'm going to start my day there and go check in on people and make sure they're okay, right? When my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer six years ago, um, I, I let him know. And the next morning, he beat me to my office and I get to my office early. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, just too, that's just who he is. So um, if uh, aside from the, the cost saving measures, the, the things that he implemented in terms of full day kindergarten, a one to one technology initiative, um, improvements in academics, all those things, it's the human being. Uh, he's not above anyone. Uh, he was out there uh, helping to get buses started in sub zero temperatures. 
And he tells that story often because he was a servant leader. And yeah, I aspired, yeah, I and aspired he still to be that. Feel, feeling in his ears still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little frostbite from that morning. He's yeah. a tough guy, right? He's a farmer. So he uh, he goes out there with no hat on and shame on him and he gets frostbite. So, yeah, I, I hope I hope that whatever my legacy is in North Penn when I uh, finish my career, and hopefully that's here, people look back and, and say more than anything, it's just a good human being who cares about others. So you've, you've been with North Penn for seven years. You, you've been in the community. Uh, you've grown up in the community, in the area. You're a Souderton grad. Um, and, uh, you know, you've worked at uh, Souderton uh, School District, Central Bucks School District. Um, when you look at, you know, your last seven years and your experiences in other school systems, what, what really excites you about taking on the position of superintendent here at North Penn? You know, what, what is it about... Um, this school system, this community that really excites you about starting uh, today, July 1, as new superintendent? Yeah, um, it's the people, Bob. There's no doubt about it, right? Everything from our staff is incredible. Um, I have great working relationships with our teachers and our support staff. Um, it means so much to me when, you know, you walk through a building and the custodians tell you, hey, we're pulling for you. We hope you get this. <laughs> um, it's really the people. And then you look at the students. And uh, North Penn is a representation of our country and our world, right? It's such a beautiful place with such beautiful people um, who work together and aspire to make the world better. Um, so it, it is reasonable to say that there is not the same amount of diversity in Southerton, in Central Bucks. There's not. I mean, you just look at the statistics and the demographics. There's not. And um, they are great communities as well, but North Penn has something to offer and that sense of pride in who we are. And you walk into a classroom and there are so many different children from different walks of life uh, that it's, it's inspiring um, the way that we all work together and try to do what's best for our kids. So North Penn uh, was appealing to me to come here as the high school principal seven years ago um, for that reason. And it is the reason I wanted to be the superintendent. Certainly there have been opportunities elsewhere there have been positions that people are like, you're going to apply for that, right? And I have not applied for a single position outside of North Penn. And I don't plan to since I got here because um, this is where I want to be. This is a community uh, that I love. I, as a born and bred Southerton person, it was always <laughs> red and white. And I was envious of North Penn because I was a swimmer and a swim coach. And uh, now it's, it's Navy and Columbia through and through. Hence the shirt today. I had to wear it in honor. Of, of the North Penn community. Excellent. And, and so with that, you know, uh, I also agree. I, 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 I love working here. Um, I can't imagine doing this anywhere else. Um, and, um, you know, from a standpoint of, I think, you know, I, the exciting part about my job is sharing all the amazing things that go on every single day in our school system. And I always say like, you know, it doesn't matter. I can walk into any classroom. There's an amazing story to tell. Um, that all being said, and I like saying how great we are. <laughs> You sure do. Um, I do. Um, what do you believe are our biggest challenges moving forward for, for the school system? Yeah. Um, so there are the obvious ones, right? On the heels of the last two years, uh, student achievement is down, you know, across the world. Um, and we will catch up, right? And everyone has been through the same situation. Uh, but there are behavioral challenges. There are mental health challenges. There are so many things that every school system in existence can say, and we're going to tackle those things head, head on. And given our history and the successes that you just mentioned, I have confidence that we'll do it as well or better than anyone. I, I have confidence in that. I'd really like to see our community heal, Bob. Um, you know, the, the political climate has been challenging. That, that's not a secret. Um, you can tune into meetings and it's been difficult. I try to assume the best of intentions from everyone. And despite the fact that maybe we disagree or I, I just can't understand their point, I assume it's coming from a good place. And when you're talking about a school system, I'm assuming it's coming from a care for children. Um, sometimes that might not be the case, but I assume that because I think it helps us move forward and work together. So aside from all the aspects of uh, our staff healing and recovering, our students doing the same. I'd really like to see our community come together and recognize that we can have civil discourse. We can disagree, we can debate, but we'll do so respect respectfully 
and we will be good role models for our students uh, because they follow our lead. And over the last two years, I'm not sure we always did a good job of leading for them. Uh, so I'm hopeful that we can do that. I look forward to working with everyone, building relationships with everyone um, and, and doing everything that we can to make sure we're as successful as possible. Alex, and as we talk about um, talking with everybody, your 100-day plan was just um, released um, about 46 minutes ago. So it's out on the district website. Um, parents and staff received that in an email from you at 10 o'clock today. And uh, it's actually posted on this Facebook page. If you just scroll down a little bit, you can click on it there as well. Um, and you talk about your, your, your community engagement plan. What are some of those things that um, you'd like to highlight a, about community engagement and how you're going to hear from all the different groups in our community and our staff and our students? What's that look like over the next two, three months? Yeah, great. So uh, exhibit A, this <laughs> conversation, Bob. Right. I'm hoping to make myself extremely accessible in all avenues. Um, I'm hoping to recap board meetings with you or even better. I love you, Bob, but even better, maybe with a student. Right. And have a student interview on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube. Get it out there the next day and maybe put things in layman's terms for people. You, you might watch a board meeting and hear all kinds of legal mumbo jumbo, but we can have a conversation so that people can be engaged. Uh, we, it's no secret again that we are about to hopefully embark on a huge renovation of North Penn High School. And what is that going to do in terms of grade structure? Will ninth grade move to the high school campus? And I plan to engage the community in that conversation the entire way. Uh, the opportunities are so exciting. The fact that that can be the flagship high school, not only in the area or in our district or our county, but the country. Um, we have opportunities in North Penn that others do not. And, and the dynamic of our size really adds to that. We can just offer these opportunities like a small community college that other high schools can't. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I also plan to make myself accessible in the community, um, not just electronically or virtually, but really go out and meet people where they are. I'd love to go to places of worship and engage the leaders and, and the members of uh, these organizations. I'd love to have sit down little town hall coffee conversations with folks. Um, the best part of the job is the people and the people expands the entire North Penn community. It is not sitting at my desk and writing emails. It is not working on uh, formal paperwork. That's necessary work um, and it's important work, but the worthwhile work is really the people and showing them how much you care. Um, and when you invest the time in the people, the really difficult conversations are easier, right? Um, if they trust you, if you've built that rapport with them and they're like, okay, yeah, no, I trust him. Uh, he cares. He's trying to help our kids. I might not agree, but I trust him. Um, then those difficult conversations are a whole lot easier. So virtually, uh, in writing, of course, there will be newsletters and e-matters can continue but I'm hoping that the conversation is more regular um, and, and avenues that work for our folks. And these are just my ideas, right? We have over 100,000 people in our community who have their own ideas, and I look forward to hearing them. So these are a couple ways that I'm hoping to engage our, our community, but I'm sure there are others that I haven't even dreamt of yet. Well, one of the things, you know, that I've really taken to heart that I've learned from you over your time as high school principal, uh, assistant superintendent, all through COVID as we're making difficult decisions and trying to reinvent education over the last two years of trying to figure out how, how we can do what's best for kids is where we came back to keep saying, you know, trust our kids. Yep. Trust what they have to say to us. And uh, I always take that to heart when we're, we're making tough decisions and you reset and you go, OK, there's all these other reasons why. What are the kids saying? And, and what are some of your plans to stay engaged with the student body and our students K through 12 to hear from them and, and make sure that their voice is heard and these decisions we're making moving forward? Yeah, I'm so glad you said that, Bob, because, uh, and you always bring it up and it means a lot to me. You say, what does Todd always say? Trust the kids, right? So I've experienced quite a few challenges in my career, just in the, the brief seven years that I've been here, everything from a fire to a pandemic to uh student loss, uh, staff loss, uh, tragic things. And you lean on children and kids to guide the way. Um, so uh, one thing that comes to mind is the graduation of 2020. 
right? And we're trying to figure out how's this going to look? What are we going to be allowed to do? What will the county let us do? What will the Office of Public Health approve? All these things. And there was debate. It, it, it's, it's, I feel comfortable sharing that among administrators, school board members, teachers, staff, principals, there was a lot of debate. And ultimately, in one of our hot meetings, I said, let's ask the kids. Let's see what the kids want to do. Uh, they're never wrong. And so we held these open forums that were virtual and we asked the kids to vote and give us their opinion and comment. And I'll tell you what, that was the most universally loved event I have ever seen in a school district. I did not have one single negative response from that. Everyone loved the experience. And I'm not sure I know of a school in the world who did graduation better in 2020. Yeah, we had the advantage of oh, I don't know, we were going to blow up our track so we could drive on it. Uh, but that's okay, right? You have to make uh, opportunity or make lemonade out of your lemons. And one of our lemons was we knew that we were going to be working on Crawford Stadium. Um, so all that said, yes, I, I it's a point of pride for me that I just engage kids a lot and have great relationships with kids. So I plan to continue the superintendent conversations in the buildings, um, but I'd like to engage kids in like you, we just said, in, in their formats and in their media. Um, I've never used TikTok in my life. I've danced in a TikTok video a few times <laughs> with my children, uh, but I don't know how to use it. So I know there's, um, there's TikTok and Snapchat and all these mechanisms that I'm going to need Bob Gilmer to help me with to try to meet kids um, and, and work with them and talk with them. Um, but there's no replacement for the in-person, face-to-face, sit-down, um, and really engage people. So uh, the same things hold true that I said about the community with the kids um, and the kids at all levels and all walks of life, right? Too often in education, we focus on certain kids. It's about all of them. Um, and we need to make sure that it's truly a cross section of our students. Because um, if, if we just go into classrooms, uh, AP classrooms at the high school, for example, Yes, you're hearing a certain student voice or student profile voice, but you have to hear from all students in all classes um, and all interest levels at, and across our three middle school, elementary and high school. So uh, really looking forward to the kid part. That's that's the best part of the job. Excellent. So um, just a couple of things, you know, uh, I have to say when I first read your 100 day plan, um, mm -hmm. it, I, it took it to heart on the first core value commitment to my family and to yours. And I think one of the things, you know, throughout the last two years, as we're, you know, it's a new spring of things uh, re restarting, right? Um, that there's a lot of folks, whether it was a students or parents or our staff working really hard uh, because it was important to make sure that we tried to figure out how to do what was right for kids in, in an, an environment we none of us have ever been in before. Um, sure, so sure. a lot of people are, are overworked, you know, tired or burned out, um, worn down. Um, and, and so when, when you read commitment to my family and to yours, you know, it resonates to me of saying how you take care of yourself in, in addition to taking care of everybody, everybody else. And, and I think, you know, one of the things I wanted to, to talk to you about is how do we, as superintendent, as staff members, uh, help our staff, our parents and our students help take care of themselves. You know, here we are on Friday, we're going into July 4th. You know, you could be working all weekend, today's day one. Um, you know, how do you take care of yourself, your family, and how do you encourage those in our system, whether it be staff members or students or even our parents to help take care of themselves um, so that they can be them best selves and, and be healthy mentally and physically? Yeah, well, you packaged a lot into that question, and, and I'm not a uh, I'm not a super emotional person. However, I got a little choked up there when you paused and said my family and yours, and I truly mean that. Um, and there's a reason that's listed as number one, right? So, Bob, I got to be honest with you. When you and I hang up this call, um, I'm headed to Central Pennsylvania with my son for Little League State Championships. Uh, I coach his team, the Harleysville Hornets, nine U. And uh, we are headed to play a long weekend of baseball. And I'm so excited for that. And, and through the interview process, and those of you who know me well, um, I, am, I am not going to sacrifice my family in any which way. Certainly the job requires a ton of time, 
right? But so did the job of assistant superintendent and high school principal. And I understand uh, the investment that my entire family is making to the North Penn community. I get that. But I'm also going to be a dad. Um, and North Penn has demonstrated that it's the type of community that values that. And our school board has demonstrated to me that they value that and they want me to be a dad. They want me to be involved in my kids' lives uh, and go coach and go see their events. Um, so I am going to do that. There's no question. Uh, and as exhibited by the, the truck is already packed and we're ready to roll for the weekend. Um, but the answer to the, the bigger part, and by the way, I guess I should throw out there, I have two kids. Uh, they are going into fourth and seventh grade. My wife is also an educator. Um, and she is the most wonderful person I know. Uh, she allows me to do the job that I do. Uh, it's a partnership. We work together. Uh, there are so many times where she keeps dogs quiet and kids off the screen during these virtual meetings, like right now. Um, and Nicole and I actually have been together since we were 15, um, high school sweethearts. So she's my best friend and the best person that I know, and she allows all this to happen. Um, so all that said, I, I think all the things that you and I have already mentioned, Bob, are how we do the things that you asked, right? It's the relationships. It's listening to folks. It's, it's uh, taking their temperature through continuously, you know, quick pulse surveys or phone calls or stopping in and engaging in person. We've already set up a plan to get our cabinet members out into buildings, not just to hold meetings in buildings, but to go out and truly engage in buildings. And for example, we're planning to get into our buildings before school starts so that we can walk around and talk to the staff and all staff because everybody makes this thing work. Um, so it's really those relationships and, and making, allowing people to see the true you that makes them feel comfortable coming up and saying, hey, Todd, this is not working for me and this is why. Um, now that said, we have to be fair. We have to be consistent. Right? We have an organization with over 2,000 employees and over 100,000 community members. Right, So we have to be fair. Um, but fair is not always equal, and equal is not always fair. You have to build the relationships and work with people and try to give them what they need in that moment. Excellent. So we're coming up. I thought this was going to be like five, 10 minutes and here we're coming up on a half hour. So look be at mindful us. Of, I know, look at this. <laughs> be mindful of everybody's time uh, and to wrap up and to get everybody going on their July 4th weekend. Uh, any final thoughts for our community as we head into uh, this weekend? Yeah, great. Uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, the long weekend. I hope everyone can celebrate with their families and their loved ones and their friends. Um, I just want to vow to this community Look, I am nowhere close to perfect. And I know that the job that I do will not be perfect. I know there will be bumps along the way, but I trust that our relationships and the things that we've mentioned in this conversation will help us get through those things. I will give everything I have to this community, I'm fully committed and fully vested uh, in, in making it a sense of pride for all of us. Um, I, it, we're all proud of North Penn. That's why we're here, right? A lot of people move to North Penn because of our school system. And I love that. Um, but let's take us to new heights. Let's work together. Uh, let's sit down and have a civil discourse and conversation. Um, and then the opportunities are limitless. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I, I recognize the faith that the community is putting in me as the leader of the school district. And I, I plan to capitalize on that trust. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to, to be working with you as well. And uh, we hope to do more of these. So we'll have more of these chats in the, in the future. Uh, for everybody else that, that was hanging around watching us here this last half hour, thank you for taking the time to, to spend some time with our first day on the job, Superintendent Dr. Todd Bauer. Uh, for everyone else, have a wonderful and happy and safe July 4th weekend. We'll see everybody back on the other side next week. So that's all we got to say. I always have to do the North Penn wave <laughs> and we'll take care, everybody. Have a safe and happy one. Take care. Thanks, Bob. Take care, everyone.